All right, hi everyone. We're looking at our next topic uh, in your right triangles in finding the missing measures. Now we've looked at geometric mean that said we had to have the altitude inside the triangle to find the missing pieces. If we don't have the altitude, the other options we had were Pythagorean theorem that said you had an A side, a B side, and a C side, and you had the different versions to find each of those three letters. We also had your special right triangles that said you only need one acute angle and then, I'm sorry, you only need one side and then your angles have to be either 30, 60, or 90 or 45, 45, 90. And you had a short leg and a long leg and the hypotenuse for 30, 60, 90, or you had just two isosceles legs for 45, 45, 90. So what happens if we have a right triangle that only gives us one side and it only gives us an a one angle that is not one of the specials it's not 30 it's not 45 and it's not 60. what if it's maybe 63 or 52 something else we need another way to find the missing sides uh, of your right triangles and that's where this next topic comes in it's called trigonometry or trig for short so specifically, the trigonometry is just the ratio of sides of this triangle. And depending on which two sides you use, you get a different ratio. So first and foremost, the one thing you always want to make sure you locate is the hypotenuse. That is the one thing that is consistent for all of these triangles that we've done so far. So locate your 90 degrees because across from that, the hypotenuse. Sometimes we need the hypotenuse side for trig, and sometimes we don't. The other two legs of this triangle, we're not going to call them short leg and long leg for trig. They're going to have a little bit different name, and it depends on where is the acute angle given to you. So again, your hypotenuse is that whole entire side across from the 90 degrees. Now let's look at the angle that's here. The angle they give us in this triangle just happens to be at the top. It easily, though, could be in that bottom corner. So once you locate your given angle, how you label the other two sides comes from that angle. So first things first, look all the way across from that given angle. That side is what we call the opposite side. Okay, that is your opposite. Now, whatever side is creating that acute angle, so whatever side touches that acute angle or creates it, we call that the adjacent side. Just adjacent. So that entire side that's there, that left side of this triangle, is the adjacent side. And again, notice it is connected to that acute angle. It's one of the sides of that acute angle. So that's why we call it the adjacent. Now, like I said earlier, if this triangle, and I'm going to just redraw it real quick. Again, if I know where the 90 is across from that is the hypotenuse. But this time, let's say the angle was in the bottom corner instead. So again, that changes opposite and adjacent. Opposite is always all the way across from the angle. So this time there is my opposite. While adjacent again is always the side connected to the angle. So the only difference here with these two pictures is the angle has moved. So when the angle changes corners, it does change the labeling for opposite and adjacent. But hypotenuse did not go anywhere. It is in exactly the same position across from 90. So just be careful when you are labeling your triangles. 
Now, to create our ratios for trigonometry or your trig ratios, it depends on what two sides do you have or what two sides are you going to use. One of your sides will have your variable, so you have to use that one. One of the sides would have a measurement, so you have to use that. So it depends on where the information is at in your triangle. So let's take a look at your first ratio here called sine. All spelled out, it is S-I-N-E or just S-I-N for short. Now where the angle is sitting inside this triangle, that is the given acute angle. Okay, that is where that angle was sitting in the triangle, the acute one, not the 90, always the acute. Now, if you've got information at opposite and hypotenuse, then you would use those for sine. Your second one pronounced cosine. And again, where the X degrees is sitting, that is where we'll put the given angle, the given acute angle. Your cosine ratio says to use the adjacent side to that angle and the hypotenuse. So again, that is cosine, abbreviated COS. The last ratio that we have is called the tangent ratio. Or TAN for short, for abbreviation, TAN. And again, like the other two, the value inside those parentheses there where the X is sitting, that is where we put the given acute angle. Now, tangent ratio specifically needs the opposite side and the adjacent side. So again, when you're deciding on which one of the three to use, well, it depends on what do you have in the triangle? Where is the variable you're trying to find? Where's the side length they gave you? So let's see how that works for our first example, find CA. So that means down at CA, that is where my X is sitting. There's my side of X or my missing side. This X is not the same one that's up in the earlier when we labeled. All right, you could give this easy, easily a different letter if you want. All right, so first find the acute angle they give you. Actually, let's make this even a little bit easier. First and foremost, find the 90 and locate your hypotenuse. Okay, that's the easiest one to label because that one is always across from the 90. Now we can find your acute angle. In this case, that's the 59. All the way across from 59, from that angle, is opposite. Notice there's nothing there for opposite. There's no variable and there's no number. So that means I'm probably not going to use opposite or one of the ratios that has opposite in it. Because opposite is this whole entire side that has no information on it. But check out where the side of X is. Oops, sorry, that's a little big. All right, shrink this down just a little. All right, the side that has the X, notice it's connected to the 59 degree angle, which in turn makes it adjacent. So it's all about where do you have information? We have a 16 at the hypotenuse, so I have to use hypotenuse. Your X is at the adjacent, so I have to use that. Opposite side has nothing there, so I'm not using opposite. The only ones left over that uses adjacent and hypotenuse was the cosine. So we're going to fill that in. So cosine, in the parentheses, go your angle, which was 59 is equal to, then we do our ratio. Adjacent was on top, and that is your X value. Hypotenuse was on bottom, which is the 16. Now we can solve this equation. We're gonna treat this, again, they're called trig ratios for a reason. 
we are going to solve this just like we did proportions. We can put your one side over one, put your trig over one, and now cross multiply. One times X is equal to cosine 59 times 16. Now, when we bring these down, the trig always goes last. So six times cosine 59, or 16 times cosine 59. Now we can keep solving this. You have something times X. So we're gonna need to divide out that piece first. Cause again, your goal is to get the X by itself. And so my X is whatever, 16 times cosine of 59 over one is gonna equal. So we can put that in our calculators and see what we get. Now guys, this is where I talked about using Desmos because your phone calculators do not always give you the right answer for trigonometry. No matter how many times you sit and fight with it, it you do not always get the right answer with trig on a phone. So use your Desmos. All the way in the bottom left corner is where you have sine, cosine, and tangent right above the parentheses and the comma. So we are going to type in exactly what was there. 16 times your parent, I'm sorry, not the parentheses, not yet, cosine 59. Now, one other thing to pay attention to, right above the number eight, you should see DEG. You can actually toggle that button, move it back and forth, but notice as I move it, the answer is changing. Since we measure our angles in geometry in degrees, that's what DEG stands for, degrees. Make sure you see DEG on your calculator or else you will get the wrong answer. Now, because we're in degrees, you do not have to put that degree bubble. 16 times cosine 59. And we can go ahead and hit enter because dividing by one does nothing. So 8.24060919, our final answer. We're gonna round this off to about two decimal points to the nearest hundredth. And so if I do that, we have to look at the third decimal point there, which is the zero. If where the zero is sitting, if that is five or higher, the one before it rounds up. But with the zero, it stays a four. So 8.24. So since we're rounding, x is approximately 8.24. There's your final answer. And it's done. Let's try number two. Similar idea. Find the length of BA. So first things first, locate where your BA is and put your variable if it's not already there. Once you start labeling, label the hypotenuse first. That's the easiest one to find to get it out of the way. So notice your X is at hypotenuse. So before I do anything else, I could be using sine because there's hypotenuse. I might use cosine because it's got hypotenuse. But tangent is automatically out because my X is at the hypotenuse and tangent does not use hypotenuse. So your only options are sine, cosine. Now we need to keep labeling to see what other parts do we need. So my acute angle this time is 61. All the way across the triangle is the opposite. There is nothing at opposite right now. The side that is connecting to the 61 is the adjacent. So we have something at hypotenuse and adjacent, which means this is cosine again. So let's get this set up. So cosine of our angle, 61 degrees, is equal to adjacent, which was five, so five is on top, over hypotenuse, so X is on bottom. Same thing. Now let's set this up as a proportion and we're gonna solve. So one times five is just a five, equals two, cosine 61 times X. So remember the trig goes at the end. And now we can continue to solve this. 
Now the cosine 61, guys, that's just a number. It's just a long decimal number. So eventually you would divide out that number. So we're gonna go ahead and just divide by your cosine 61 now. And five, divide by cosine 61. So my X is all by itself. So X is gonna be whatever five divided by cosine 61 is. So let's take a look at our calculators. Again, Desmos is the one to use. So five divided by cosine 61, close your parentheses, and there's our answer, 10.31 So again, I'm just gonna terminate after two decimal points. So look to the third one, which is a three. So that one for 0 0.31 will stay as it is. So my X is about 10 point, I think it was 31. Yes. And there is my final. Let's do another one. Let's keep lab practice labeling these. Now we're looking for CA. So get your variable on there, CA. Label this from your trying, from the acute angle. Notice this time the angle is not in that bottom corner. It's up there at angle B. All the way across the triangle is opposite. So guess what? This time you have opposite and you have to use that piece. So the only options we've got for opposite is sine, because opposite's on top, or tangent, opposite's on top for it too. Let's keep going and see which one of the two we need to use. Now they give us a side of three. That side of three is connected to that acute angle, which means that is adjacent. And opposite and adjacent are the two we have to use, which is a tangent this time. So tangent, our angle goes in the parentheses of 51 degrees is equal to opposite, which is X over adjacent, which is three. Set up our proportion and let's cross multiply. One times X is just an X. Tangent of 51 times three. Again, the trig goes at the end. And now because we just have a one X, you don't have to do that divide step. I just did it earlier to show the process. Let's put this into your calculator, three times tangent 51. So back in Desmos, three times tangent is right above the comma, 51, we're still in degrees, so I don't have to put the bubble. And there's my final answer, 3.704. So again, that four is less than five, so it's gonna stay as a seven zero. Oops, and I already forgot, three seven zero. So X is about 3.70. And there's our final. All right, so again, guys, we always want to label from that acute angle they give you. So the, the last ones, I'm gonna do it very much like this one and only label where we have information from the acute angle. And let's see what happens. All right, we're finding BC. So we're down at the bottom of the triangle this time. So start from your acute angle. In this case, 53, look all the way across, that is opposite, and that's where we have a two. So no matter what, I have to use opposite. So that is either sine, because it's got opposite on the top, or tangent, again, opposites on the top. Now we just need to decide, are they giving me adjacent or do I have a hypotenuse? Let's see what else we've got going on. All right, we also have the side of X, which is connected to that 53, making it adjacent. So this is a tangent ratio because we have the opposite side of two, we have the adjacent side, which is the X we're finding. So tangent is what we have. So tangent of 53 degrees is equal to opposite two over adjacent X. 
set up the proportion. Let's solve this. One times two, just a two. Tan 53 times X. So again, put the trig at the end. And let's solve this. So same way we did example two, we're going to leave the X where it is, and we're going to divide out tangent 53 because it's just a really long decimal. It's just another way to express some number. So tangent 53. Now we can put this in our calculators. So my X will be about, let's go see, 2 over tan 53. So 2 divide by tangent 53 is about 1.507. So again, look at the third digit. The 7 causes that 0 to round up. So 1.51. So X is about 1.51. And there's my final. Two more to go and we're done. So find BC, which is down on the bottom. Again, label from that 65 degree angle that they gave us. All the way across from that is opposite. The 13 is across from the 90 degrees, making it the hypotenuse. So according to your ratios, if we have opposite and hypotenuse, that is your sine ratio. So this time we get to use sine. So sine of 65 is equal to opposite x over hypotenuse 13. And let's solve this. So set up your proportion. And let's cross multiply one times X, it's just an X. Let's go the other direction, sine 65 times 15. So 15 times sine 65, because again, you want the trig at the end. And now we can put this in our calculators and see what X is gonna be. So 15 times sine of 65 degrees is 13.59. And there is our final. Last example, BA is the next one we're trying to find. So be careful with this triangle because your 90 is no longer in the same corner where it's been in the past. Your 90 right now is at the top of angle C. So look across from that. So your X is actually the hypotenuse. Your 65, I'm sorry, your 56 that's here they give us the side of seven, which is connected to that, making it adjacent. So this one is actually another cosine. We have adjacent and hypotenuse, so cosine is what, we're, what we will use. So cosine of 56 is equal to your adjacent seven over the hypotenuse of X. Set up that proportion and cross multiply. 1 times 7 is just a 7. Cosine 56 times x and now we can finish this solve. So leave the x where it is. We'll divide out that cosine 56. And let's see what we get for x. So 7 over cosine 56. 7 divided by cosine 56. So 12.518. So again, that 8 is 5 or bigger. So it's going to make the 1 round up to a 2. So 1252. And there is our final. All right, guys, so I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about how we set up our trig ratios. Uh, make sure you join me next time because we're going to look at how you use these ratios to find the missing side lengths of our triangles. Oops, sorry, guys, I just realized I made a typo on number five. 
because it has a 13 for the hypotenuse and I read 15. So let me fix that real quick because that is gonna change the answer. So again, just a little typo in here, my apologies. So instead of 15, that was supposed to be a 13. So when we cross multiply that, it won't be 15 times sine 65, it would be 13 times sine 65. So let me put that back in instead, 13 times sine 65, because I want you guys to make sure you have the right answer, 11.782, so 11.78. Sorry about that, caught my little typo, 11.78. Okay, so guys, again, I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit about your trig and how we use it to find missing side links. Please make sure you're using your Desmos calculator. And if you're not sure, don't hesitate to reach out to me and I am happy to help you guys.